everybody thought that the go public window has been slammed and sealed shut for the foreseeable future. Why did you decide to try to rip it open? Well, first of all, thank you, Emily. Really appreciate you having me. Um, Big day, great day for gaming, great day for Gen Z. Um, and, you know, you know, talking about Gen Z, the, the timing is actually uh, prescient because Gen Z is actually rising to power not only as a cultural driver, um, like all youth, uh, youth generations are, but they're eclipsing, they're eclipsing their driver as, as just culture into changing how we transact, um, tra changing how they consume, and uh, at, by the end of the decade, they're gonna have $33 trillion of spending power. And so what we're seeing is this ascendancy of Gen Z. I think that we, are, um, we, are, we typify that ascendancy as the first Gen Z native, pub uh, native company to go public. Um, and so I think, I think the timing feels perfect. Shares did drop some, you know, 25% or so. I mean, do you still think the timing is right? Uh, the timing is definitely right. And the reality is uh, th th this day is about the launch of, the fir of a first Gen Z native company going public. It's not about the market conditions today. We're building value for the long term. You know, we're, you check in with us at 12 months, at 18 months, at 24 months. We're building value for our community, for our shareholders, um, and, uh, and we'll just be building for the long term. FaZe is at the intersection of some really volatile industries, including eSports and Web3. You know, talk to us about what makes this, uh, you know, sort of cocktail, this place where you sit in business so unique and potentially valuable. So we really do sit at the, inter at the intersection of technology and culture. That's really what we did uh, starting in 2010. Right, gaming sits at the, t at the intersection of technology and culture. I don't think people understood that about gaming, that gaming is culture. Um, gaming culture uh, has become youth culture overall, uh, and we've been pioneers at that, and our plan is to continue to pioneer, and a great example of that is Web3, which also happens to be led and driven by culture at the moment. And so we've been positioning ourselves amongst all of the blue chip companies and brands within Web3, and we see our opportunity to bring the massive gaming community, which is not yet in Web3, we see the opportunity for us to build that bridge and usher in that massive gaming audience, not only our 500 million plus follower network, but the gaming community at large into what will be um, really a, a colossal part of our future that, that frankly will, will disrupt um, not only what you've seen so far in things like, like art, but, um, but Web3 is gonna impact commerce overall. Um, so, so we're positioned our, ourselves to, uh, to bring our generation into that and, uh, and, we, and we see that as an amazing opportunity for us. What don't investors understand yet about how Gen Z is, is really gonna change things and how to capitalize on these trends? So I think what we've seen so far is the, the way they consume content, right? They've, they've moved away from the traditional, um, the, the traditional spaces of content, heavy on YouTube, heavy on internet, heavy on Twitch, and that's really the beginning of the change. That's not the totality of the change. Gen Z just demands something different um, from the brands that they support. Gen Z wants to be treated as a community, not a customer. Uh, at, at this point, I, 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 I hesitate to always use the word customer because it almost feels pejorative from the Gen Z lens. And I think that, that the majority of, of traditional companies don't really understand it. They don't understand that sea change. They don't understand that Gen Z is rising to power in a different way. You know, again, by, by, the, by the end of the decade to have 33 trillion in buying power. Uh, another, another sign of this is that in this, this election is, you know, we're, we're seeing the first Gen Z candidates for Congress. Um, and so there's a massive sea change coming. I think a lot of companies are, 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 are not quite prepared for the amount of change that's required to treat their, uh, their customers as their community. Um, and you know, we speak the, the Gen Z language natively. Um, we've been leading uh, Gen Z on, on the culture side, and we're, uh, and, and we're continuing to, to lead them on the commercial side as well.